Ho ho! Part of a well-balanced breakfast. Hey everybody, hopefully that intro got you even more hyped than last time. Yes, today we are going to be doing part two of our Can We Get a Pentium to Start a Fire series? I don't know. I don't think it has an official name. But anyway, we're going to be taking some user suggestions for how to get this baby to light up. And as you saw from the intro, we got the Mosin out today. No, we're not going to shoot the thing. That would be too easy. And it really wouldn't tell us anything. Uh, it's going to come in use pretty soon. But first, I want to prove that, you know, we're not using some kind of stunt powder here. I'm going to be doing a quick little burn on this uh, CPU cooler here. And then we're going to try some suggestions. I guarantee by the end of this video, you will see at least two fires. So, let's get started. So, as you can see, we have a little bit of powder sitting on our CPU cooler. This shouldn't affect the cooler in any way, but now we're going to demonstrate that it is real, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, we got the Mosin out, not as a gun necessarily, but as a long stick. We're going to put a match head on it because I don't want my hand near that uh, powder because it is flammable. Alright, let's do it. If we can keep it lit. Step back a little. Doesn't want to ignite like that. Try it again. And the Mosin is proving to be a bit too cumbersome to use for lighting this up, so I'm just going to be lighting it with my hand. And I've also adjusted the powder a bit. I made it a line so that hopefully it'll actually ignite better than last time. Let's try it. And I'm just going to put it on the powder like that. Sort of. Kind of, sort of. There we go. Yeah, baby. All right, that was pretty cool. Dude, that's sick and or realistic, and that's my opinion. So, let's move on to the computer. All right, everybody, so one of our, I guess one of the most common comments or suggestions on the video was to actually put the powder in between the cooler and the uh, CPU itself, kind of like thermal paste. So, I'll put a little bit of powder on there to start out with. we go, just a little bit on there like that. That's perfect. Okay, sweet. So now we got that on there. And we're just going to put our CPU cooler back on. Throw it back in here. All burnt up from the powder we just burned a second ago. Uh, put it under there like that. There we go. Uh, come on, get on a proving to be a bit difficult to put on. Let's manhandle a little bit more. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna... Okay, well I bent the shit out of that thing. And that seems to do the trick. Okay. It doesn't really matter, actually. So, the consensus, at least from like two people on the internet, seems to be that removing the memory will sort of bypass the thermal restrictions of the CPU, where it'll automatically turn off once it gets up to, I think like 130 degrees or something like that. So first we're gonna try taking the memory out and running it and see if it works. And then we'll try something that I think might work a little bit better if the RAM doesn't work. So we'll go ahead and remove the memory from the computer. And of course, without memory, this computer will not boot. So, there's really no point in having a screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and hook it up and see what we can do. Okay, everybody, computer is all set, plugged in. Let's plug it in. And we'll, of course, 
we have the missing memory error. What is happening to that speaker? And it shuts off. Interesting. Try to power it on again. And it simply won't power on at all. So, removing the memory does not actually bypass the thermal because for whatever reason this computer will refuse to stay on. So, let's try my idea. So, as you just saw, the computer shuts itself down when there's no memory in the computer. So, let's try to bypass that by keeping the computer on at all times. Now, if you remember from Rogamp 1 a few years ago, I made a video demonstrating how to jump a power supply to make it power on forever. So, what you do simply is take your 20 or 24 pin motherboard connector out and then you want to jump the green wire to a black wire, any black wire. Like so. So now we have our pin jumped like that and now we should be able to plug this in, have the power supply start up and it'll give 12 volt power to the uh, CPU, but it won't be able to shut itself down. It'll be permanently on. So let's try it. Power supply fan is on, I can feel it. It's making some sounds. I believe that's a fan. can't tell if this is warming up or not. Honestly, I can't tell if it's heating up or not. So I'm going to leave this on for a few minutes and see if we can get some fire. Okay, so this doesn't seem to be working. It seems like the accessory power is working, but it's not outputting 12 volt like I thought it would. So let's shut it down again. Come on, baby. There we go. All right. So this time, we're going to try jumping the cable from outside of this little, uh, well, jumping the wires from outside of this connector. So to do that, I'm going to grab some. Needleless pliers, I think, if I can locate them. Okay, screw that. We're just going to use these pliers. It'll work. So we're going to pull this cable out of this connector. So 
Also, wouldn't recommend doing this, because this might ruin your shit. Pull that connector out of there. If I can, I might have to snip it. I hope I don't have to snip it. That would suck. There we go. All right. And let's take out a ground wire. We'll go with this one. All right. So now, <laughs> now we got our, oh, I kind of screwed up this connector, damn it. I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, let me, let me strip that wire a bit. So the idea is pretty simple. All we're doing is reconnecting the 20 pin motherboard power, and then we're going to be jumping these two together and then hopefully what that means is we have a permanently on computer which would be fantastic i don't think i can strip this with these i need a knife that's eh, it's getting there there we go i got it okay so we're gonna just actually let's plug this in first this is a good computer repair video, by the way. All right, cool, excellent. Plug that in, and we will simply twist these together, or twist this thing around this thing. All right. Let's see if we can get everything to power on now. And hopefully we'll get that nice big fireball we've all been waiting for to come out of this Pentium 4. Let's do it. beeping at me. It's probably because it doesn't have any memory. I forgot to put that back in. Unplug it. And let's put our memory back in since it doesn't really matter if uh, the memory's in it or not. Actually, it does matter a lot. This computer won't work without memory. Let's try it again. Permanently on, hopefully. Starting up, sort of. The lights went off on it, on the front panel. Is it just gonna run forever? The fans are on, that's a good sign. This is, this feels warmer. Maybe I'm just being optimistic. This is definitely warmer. Good, th good thermometer, right? Yeah, I mean, it's powered on. It's just that the front light isn't on at all. This thing's definitely warming up. Oh, shit! Oh, shit!